Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a diagonal roll-up. For lack of a better thing to call it, I've never made one before, so I don't know what this thing is. Using a yardstick and a washable marker, I draw a line from the shoulder down to the bottom left-hand corner, and then I slide my yardstick up underneath and line it up on that line I just drew, and it really helps make a nice crisp line for folding it diagonally. Like I said, I have not made one of these before, so I was just winging it. I thought maybe I would try to do like a tapestry fold on it or something. I don't exactly remember, but I just remember thinking, well, I'm gonna try something different. I ultimately end up just simply airplane folding it back and forth, just like I would if I folded it in a square pattern. So I just drew a line on it right here. This ultimately is not necessary. Like I said, I thought I was gonna try something fancy and then just changed my mind. So all I'm doing right now is just airplane folding it back. I'm going to fold up this sleeve and it does look like I do not have this shirt turned inside out. Sometimes I turn them inside out, sometimes I don't. Since I wasn't going to be centering the shirt and dealing with the seams, it, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. It's just a matter of preference. So once I did all my airplane folds on the top side, I flipped it over. And I did a pretty miserable job of flipping it over. Try to, when you flip it, do it nicely. And then I'm just going to repeat the process on this side. I'm just gonna airplane fold it. I added a couple more airplane folds to it, and if you've done it correctly, one side's going to have two thick folds, and then the other side will have several of the thin folds. And then from here, I'm just going to roll it up like a giant cinnamon roll. Easy peasy. So you see why I don't really have a name for this. It's like an airplane fold cinnamon roll. So it's just a diagonal roll up. We'll just keep it simple, call it what it is. And once I have it all rolled up, I'm just going to simply secure it by using my favorite rubber bands. And I do have links down below for all of the tools that I use for tie-dye in the description box. So go ahead and check that out. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And for this project, I'm using two of the colors that are available in the dye giveaway. So today is September 9th, and today will be the last day to get your entries in for the dye giveaway. So I'm excited to use these colors. I have not used them before. So what a better way to just do a shirt that you have no idea what it's gonna turn out like with two colors you don't even know what they look like. Fun stuff. This is the kind of tie dye that I like to make. It's what keeps it exciting. This Misty Rose is giving me vibes of powder pink. So I'm adding it pretty heavy. Pinks typically aren't very good saturators when it comes to ice dyeing, so I wanna make sure that I do have some color in there. And then I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I add my ice. Now I do have it sitting down in my over the sink strainer, but I have placed an ice barrier around it just because I want to avoid needing to fill up the entire strainer with ice. I'm just trying to be conservative so I can go on and make other projects and have enough ice to do it. So after the project melted, I came back and I checked it, and it had really good saturation on the top, but very little saturation on the bottom. There's a lot of fabric here. So I peek inside and yeah, not very good saturation. So I'm just going to flip it over and repeat the process. With the first round, it ended up looking pretty dark and I was wanting more of a pinkish type shirt. So I decided to start with the pink this time. Last time I started with wet sands, this time I'm starting with the powder pink and I'm going super heavy with the powder pink. I really wanna get saturation down in there. I don't wanna to have to come back and add more dye. 
So I'm going heavy with the pink and then I'm going to go heavy also with the wet sands but not quite as heavy. Another sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, especially with the second round of ice. We've pushed a lot of water through this project and we need to keep that pH up around 10.5 to 11. And then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. And this project batched for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then increase your water up too hot. That's going to remove any unbonded dye. And you want to rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And like I said before, the links are down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. It just makes it easy for you to find. And then I'll put the project in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well here it is guys. Here's our shirt after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out really cool. Like I said, I had no idea what to expect and I actually like this a lot. At first I was thinking, oh no, there's still quite a bit of undersaturation on it, but I actually like it. It really breaks it up a little bit so that you can see the colors. So the Misty Rose definitely is giving me those powder pink vibes. So if you don't have it, I would say that powder pink is a good substitute. And then the Wet Sands is a lot greener than I thought it was going to be. It reminds me a lot of Sage Green, another substitute. Overall, I think the pattern looks cool. I'm definitely going to play around with this again. You know, if other tie dyers have made this pattern already, I personally haven't seen it or I'm unaware of it. So if it has a different name, um, great. But for now, it's going to be a diagonal roll up. Overall, I'm really pleased with the shirt. I think the colors look beautiful. I need to swatch these colors out. And I was also thinking I need to start doing a playlist of the uh, special order dies to swatch them out and I'm trying to think of what kind of a fold do I just want to continue on with the spirals this might be a good fold to do however it's very time-consuming because I have to flip it over um, spirals just might be the way to go but anyways I digress overall I'm pretty pleased with the shirt I think it looks really pretty and I think the colors look great together what do you guys think please leave me some comments down below Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.